All right, folks, welcome to uh, the homework session where I'm going to be explaining the weekly homework framework that we're going to be using in my Discord community here. Uh, we are going to be doing a self-improvement exercise every week. Um, this is entirely up to you. Uh, you can do this at your own pace. You can add more to it or subtract from it. But there is a baseline that you can use for this, for your weekly figure drawing that uh, and a weekly track of progression that you can use that I will furnish you with and also like point you in the direction of. And it will be modular so that you can use your own study materials um, uh, for your weekly, your weekly practice. So uh, what, what it is, you got to do each week before Friday, 10 to 20 figure drawings from clear photo reference. And you got to spend, spend around five minutes on each drawing. Okay. You can uh, spend more time if you need to. Can spend more if you need to. Spend more time if you need to. And uh, the goal of the and the goal of this is steady, consistent self improvement. So, how will you be doing these figure drawings? Well, that is up to you. Uh, what you should be using for doing your figure drawings is use an existing figure drawing resource like a book, class, tutorial, series, etc. Pick, uh, no, use, uh, pick one thing from that guide to concentrate for the whole, to concentrate on for the whole week when you say one thing yes i'm going to explain that in a, in a bit here so uh it's taking me a little time to write all this out but okay so basically what this is this is a modular um exercise thing uh, you can do it at your own pace. Uh, I'm going to write that up here. And do this at your own pace. Do this at your own pace. Uh, so what this is, uh, is the idea is that, like, everyone has, like, a, everyone here is, like, pretty familiar with, like, a lot of, like, an overwhelming amount of, like, drawing tutorials and like drawing books and drawing guides and maybe you've been in classes where you were furnished with method methods to draw so what i want you to do is i want you to pick a main thing pick a main thing pick a main thing 
thing to concentrate your energy is on, on learning. There's going to be secondary things that you're also going to be learning too that you can play with and you have a little more freedom with, but you have to pick a main thing that you're going to be focusing on. Um, what that would mean is that, for example, uh, uh, you have, for example, like let's say you pick the Mike Matisse Force books, or you pick uh, Glenn Vilpu's uh, drawing manual, or you pick uh, Steve Houston's um, figure drawing series, uh, or you pick, like, oh, I don't, um, did I mention Proco yet? The, uh, the Proco YouTube channel. You pick, like, the, uh, the lessons there. Uh, what you do is you pick something that is robust enough that offers, like, a track of progression for you. You can even pick existing classes you've taken, like materials from existing classes you've taken that you want to restudy. You can even use, you, well, uh, I would actually like defer to whatever the instructor is having you do in place of this if, and make that your main thing instead of this. So uh, this is like what you can do if you don't have that, basically. Uh, but, uh, but basically, uh, this is to give you a consistent framework to practice and repeat doing a, a consistent thing every week. Like for, uh, like for me, for example, I want to show you what I'm doing. So I took Tev Kevin Chen's... Uh, I took Kevin Chen's uh, figure drawing, uh, analytical figure drawing class. Let me see if I can find some of the more recent examples I did from this. Uh, but yeah, like uh, I'm re what I'm doing is like this week after a, a long drawing break, after ending the 10 week class that I was in, uh, after uh, finishing that, I, uh, I'm restudying everything from scratch. I'm like going back to the, I'm going back to week one, the week one homework assignment and redoing it. That's what I've chosen to do. What you might choose to do is you might uh, you might do the same thing, but you will do it with a particular lesson from Proco that offers uh, like a next step in progression and stuff. Like he he has like his gesture drawing stuff that he starts people out with, and he has like he even has homework assignments of uh, of for like uh, for like what you're supposed to do and stuff. I think there's, they even offer like some feedback sections on their Facebook or something, but, um, but, uh, basically like you have to decide on something that you are going to concentrate your energies on studying from week to week. So let me show you what I did, what I did for Kevin's class right here. I'm not going to go into too much detail into this, but this is like, this is like my week. I, I this is like a quick overview of like the week one stuff I did for his class and so on. Uh, I wasn't too good there, but like, been like somewhere around uh i think i started to hit my stride a little bit more somewhere around here wait no not that big class uh oh yeah yeah started to do considerably better around here so but yeah uh so like that's what i'm doing this is what i've chosen to focus my energy on uh so i want you to pick a thing from like one of your drawing books, uh, one of your tutorials, one of, the, and preferably something that offers a track of progression, like uh, like Vilpu's drawing manual, Vilpu, Vilpu, Vilpu drawing, for example. Let me see if I can find. I think it was like a PDF, free a free PDF of it somewhere online. But uh, but this is um uh, this one right here. There's like different chapters, like you'd concentrate on chapter one for a week, maybe even two weeks, because this is uh, this is worth maybe spending a little bit longer on, I would say. Use your own judgment about when you move to the next stage, by the way, if you don't think you've completely d digested a particular step. Um, but basically, yeah, I want you to pick something to concentrate on a book that you can move and that gives you a track to move on to the next thing can also potentially lap yourself like once you've completed the thing go back to the beginning and do the lessons again just pick something that you can revolve around and in addition to that here play and experiment with secondary things you have more freedom 
you have much more freedom to um, play and experiment with secondary things. In my case, I'm uh, I'm doing animation. I'm trying to get in at least one animation study a day, and I'm also trying to get like a little bit of gesture drawing in. Um, and I'm going to try fitting in other things. Like I'm going to also try fitting in like maybe some animal drawings one day or something like that, or I might do some anatomy studies on the side or things like that. This the secondary thing is to give you freedom while you have like this main thing that you're pouring most of your energy into um so yeah there's that uh i will also add optional optional and to 20 Short pose, pose, gesture drawing. This is optional. I mean, technically all of this is optional. Like, you don't even have to do like 10 figures a week. Like, if you only have time for like a couple of them or something. Uh, the idea is that this is a framework. Uh, this is a framework for each week, by the way. Deadline Friday. Deadline Friday before 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, so like there's that, that, that's one optional thing. Uh, come up with your own secondary objectives. Experiment and come up with it. Come up with your own second, and also come up with your own secondary objectives. This could be anything. I'm leaving that open because I'm going to be evolving what I do and it's going to be very non-specific what I do. Like I said, I might be doing stuff like um, like I might be doing animal drawing one day or I might be like or I might decide like uh, like I, I want to do like short Instagram animations like one a day or something like that or I want to work on an animation personal project or, or something. That's why you should believe that you should keep the secondary things open and flexible. Like you can potentially be like working on like this and also be working on a secondary thing with the same kind of consistency and structure too. But you wanna keep that secondary thing a little bit open-ended and a little bit freer so that you have potentially room to, if you need to make a sacrifice so that you can experiment with doing something else, then, uh, then you have that. But you, also, you will always have this main thing to put your energies into. So, uh, I'm going to open it up for some Q&As for a bit. Uh, we will also be doing some, uh, we will also be doing some, uh, about like an hour of figure drawing and half hour to an hour of a quick, short and fun animation study. Uh, but first I want to open this up to Q&A if anyone has any questions about the homework. Uh, and oh, also, uh, post, uh, uh, very important, very important, uh, post your work in progress or finished homework in Discord feedback. All right. And for anyone who's walking in on uh, YouTube, uh, when they read see this recording, there's going to be a link to my Discord down below. All right, so uh, I'm going to open this up to Q and A. Uh, so feel free to speak up and uh, ask ask any questions you have about the homework. Uh, if or and if you have like, also like I will if you if you need a um, resource of like 
what to study and stuff. Uh, I have I have some stuff I can suggest for that, so you can ask about that too. Uh, oh, I want to uh, give a plug actually before we do the Q and A real quick to um, uh, Radio Runner's uh, curriculum for the solo artist. I think there's a new one that's been updated recently, but this is a uh, this is the main uh, image right here. So this right here, there's a lot of like mostly free resources like Proco and things like that that, that they mention here. Uh, that uh, you can you can also use this framework and stuff too in in conjunction with the framework that I'm giving you. Like uh, when you when you're doing these, you can pick like I would pick like pick figure drawing to concentrate on. Uh, maybe even perspective too. Um, or like doing the curriculum here. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll link this in chat as well. I'll link that also on the YouTube page because that'll that'll be a helpful helpful like starting point. There's like a lot of like free guides and uh, tutorials that you can study from pretty extensively uh, that it mentions there. So anyway, uh, I would like to see if anyone has any questions. So, I want to go into storyboarding or animation and uh i have uh one of the michael matessi books it's called uh dynamic life drawing for animators but uh i'm curious as to whether you you, you uh, should, could i could i take this on as something to do or should i start with something sure. more basic to get a better grip of anatomy no, no. or well or... yeah uh well uh mike Battisi uh is actually pretty well yeah, he's pretty good. For, yeah, you could you could start with him. I would use other stuff okay. too. I would use other stuff too, but like um I think there's a lot I think there's a lot to uh there's definitely a lot to um to learn from from him for sure. I would combine him okay. with I would combine him with some other things. Um Okay. But you can't but for an animator and stuff, definitely or a storyboard artist for that matter. Yeah, I would I would say he's he's pretty good to go to go to. Um, uh, there is also like he, he has a website that you, if you want to ever do the paid tutorials there, and of course he's got the books and he's got like a YouTube um, channel where he does like Friday, uh, where he does like a uh, Friday things. Uh, we we talked a bit about him yesterday, but like, uh, let's see here, horse drawing, horse drawing, Matisse. Let me find his website. Drawing Force. That's drawingforce.com. Here's his site. So yeah, he's got like about like four books, I believe. Uh, but yeah, he's got a particular method. For those who don't know, he's got a particular method uh, called Drawing with Force or Force Drawing or whatever. That uh, it puts a lot of emphasis on like interior, um, like in, like the interior uh, kind of energy of poses and stuff. It's very very animator oriented. Uh, but like illustrators and everyone else can get a lot out of it too. Like it, it's a great way to make your drawings a lot more dynamic. He is actually somebody that I'm looking at as I, as a secondary thing right now, in addition to the Kevin Chen stuff that I'm doing. Because I want to get, I, I don't want to get super stiff with my drawing. I want to get more expressive. So he also has like a, a course. He also has a courses page. He's also got a mentorship thing and stuff. So there's like a lot of options if you ever want to get into the paid stuff for that. But anyway, so yeah. Uh, did you have any additional questions or? If I should combine them with something, can I just combine them with like a Stone Art Anatomy book or uh, should I look at like, I don't know, I've never looked at Proko really, but. I would combine them with Michael Hampton, I think. Okay. Uh, Michael Hampton and maybe uh, George Bridgman. And uh, also, possible. Well, if you have Glenn, if you can get access to Glenn Vilpu, that would be a good one too. He's uh, he's very Glenn Vilpu is really accessible uh, if you get his drawing manual. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Um. So I would like to uh, see if anyone else has any questions. Oh, um, regarding like the force topic, 
Um, would you say that, um, like, the Force Fridays would be enough to learn from, or what else would you recommend? The Force Fridays are just, like, kind of, like, you, a little bit of way... The Force Fridays are kind of, like, advertising for him and stuff. It's just kind of a way to touch base and, sh and sh expose people to his methods and stuff. Uh, you, there's, there, you, can, you can learn a little bit from it on stuff. Uh, it's a way to get, like, kind of a little... To see, like, somebody getting feedback, potentially, or to see them covering a particular topic and showing how they approach it and stuff. Uh, I would say that if you wanted to get more into Mike Matissi's stuff, you should get one of his, you should get, like, the main book, the main first book in the series, if, if you can. Uh, you should also take a look at his, the pro, the cup, the Proco video, the Proco channel videos he did, uh, in, um, in partnership with Proco. Uh, those give a nice introductory overview to what his method is, and that, that he gives enough of it, he gives enough of it that you could use a little bit of what he talks about with just about anything like we were doing we, yesterday we were uh yesterday we were talking about how um actually i think i have my notes from that yesterday uh let's see here it was i think it was this or was this but yeah I took, this is some mike matissi notes i took yesterday So, um, um, real quick, I'll just get like a quick overview for people. Like, he talks about this in the Proco video, but uh, force the basics of your of how you use line, and this this will apply not just to force, but to just anything you draw, uh, but with any method, is you want to avoid uh, you want to avoid lines A and B here, and C is the kind of line you want. Uh, you want you don't want chicken scratches. You don't want lacking and confident lines that are all kind of scribbly and stuff. You uh, want to avoid B, which is where you didn't really think about the th you like you might have gotten the line, but you didn't really think about the line before you put it down. So there's a lot you, there's a lot of petting of the line. Uh, what you want to see, where yeah, you can you can draw over it to reinforce it, and you would still and you might still make mistakes that you want to fix, and you and other things like that. And it's okay to draw over it a couple few times stuff, but you want to get in the habit of ghosting your line or thinking before you or. or forcing yourself to visually think before you draw and what ghosting the line means is uh before you put a mark down you uh you do like a quick trial run of the line like you can see i don't know if i don't know yeah i, I think it's recording my cursor yeah it's recording my cursor in obs good uh but you can see like uh i'm doing like kind of an s curve shape right here with my cursor before i put a mark down you can do this traditionally too by the way uh, but then, like, you basically, basically, it's a way to kind of, like, it's, it's a way to test what the line will look like with a ghost after image in your head before you put the line down. So you can see if a line is going to work or not before you actually put it down. Like, you, you'll train yourself to see the line by doing this before you put it down, basically. And it's a great way to economize what you do and to, to like, inst reflexively, like, if you reflexively train yourself to do this, like just about every time you do a line, it'll vastly improve your line quality. I'm working on trying to get that. Uh, the other thing, um, let's see. Oh yeah. Uh, also, somebody mentioned yesterday on Drawbox, one of the exercises there is to connect the dots, where you like have a couple endpoints and stuff. That would that, that would definitely be something that would come up with figure drawing potentially. Like maybe like these are two endpoints of an arm, and you need like I need a curve between them for like like that. I need a curve here, like that, or like a line there, and I need like a curving line there, it's so like this. Now I've got like a forearm and a bicep, basically. But yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, like, make sure, make sure like you're not, uh, try to avoid like making a line before you test it out. It's a, it's, sometimes it's okay to do it, but but you want to you want to really try to favor and make make a reflexive habit out of ghosting your lines before you put a mark down. So the other thing that he mentioned was like uh okay uh, I'm just gonna touch on this really quick. So like this this orange stuff in here is the secondary force that's pressing in inside the form of the figure basically, and it's pressing outwards right here. Like it's always pushing on the apex of the curve. Um, the main event of the curve, as he calls it. 
and depending on how much force there is, it'll bend the line more. There's also other stuff too, like uh, if you draw slower, you'll, 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 you, that will be the control that you'll use to do shallower curves. If you draw faster, and look at I'm ghosting my line to make sure that I get the, shot, the, the deeper curve that I want. If you draw faster with the whoops, I didn't quite get this line mark I wanted. Didn't still didn't quite get it. Uh, maybe if I draw at this angle, or I'm not blocking my vision. That's yeah, a little bit closer. Let's reinforce that a bit. So like, if you draw faster versus like draw slower, right here you can get shallower or deeper curves like when you when you are when you're drawing deep deeper curves you should be drawing faster versus like shallower curves basically and that's like that's what they refer to as the tempo of the line so like keep that in mind that is something you want to practice and in fact in my discord there is a section that may, uh, I would suggest like uh, other people here, in addition to the homework that I'm assigning, to take a look at the daily warm-up section of my Discord here. Uh, look at the pinned messages here. And uh, there is a giant uh, write-up here where I explain this four-part exercise thing. I'm not gonna go over it now, but um, there is a video explaining what the heck this is and how you're supposed to use it right here. That you can watch in addition to this. And as you can see in these, this right, whoops, not that. Uh, as you can see in the, um, in this section of my Discord, a lot of people have been doing these daily warm-ups to improve their core draftsmanship. Uh, this is something I would strongly re recommend. Like newer people do at least an hour a day before they, before they start draw anything. Oops, that's not it. Uh, this is, that's one of them. That's one of them. But this is a exercise for improving, uh, among other things that, uh, that they have you practice. This is, an ex this is exercise stuff for improving like your, your line control and your arm strength and so on. Uh, among other things in here is basically what I was, what, what Mike Matisse was talk, what Mike, Mike Matisse talks about. Now there's exercise, is, there's exercises in here for finding your sweet spot of control of for different degrees of how shallow and deep your curves are that's like the number two the number two exercise of these four of the four part exercises in here so in addition to the figure drawing stuff that i'm having you guys do if you're if you're relatively new and your draftsmanship isn't too hot yet your line control is lacking uh make make time to do to spend an hour a day doing this uh or doing the uh doing this right here every day uh, do it for an do it for like a, at least an hour a day uh, for a month and uh, and after that uh, about after that you should be ready to shorten it to about a half hour anyway this is uh, the reason why you want, why you want to do it every day is it is a literally a, a physical arm workout to give you the manual dexterity that you need in order in manual dex dexterity and control that you need to pull off the lines you need when you need them and stuff uh, and it explains here how, and I, it explains here how you're supposed to draw from your shoulder, how you're supposed to sit in front of the, uh, how you're supposed to sit in front of the, uh, the drawing tape, the drawing pad, and um, explain how to do it here. And this is something that can be done traditionally or digitally. In fact, I would recommend doing it traditionally if you're able. So anyway, that's a little supplemental thing to talk about here. So uh, does anyone have any additional questions, or was there a question that I failed to? not quite answer completely feel free to re-ask someone asked in the text they wanted to know should they do the warm-ups with pen and paper or can they do it with their tablet um i would recommend for newer artists you want to avoid you want to like avoid using the tablet and you want to do traditional as much as possible the reason for that is the tablet is going to inherently be limiting compared to what you can do traditionally you have way more line way more control of your line You'll have a way more of a, uh, you'll develop an understanding of like how a drawing implement should feel um, from, uh, from drawing traditionally. Uh, and you will be able to then figure out what you need to do in a draw in, in art apps and in, uh, on, a, on your drawing tablet to adjust its sensitivity 
and its uh, pressure its pressure settings and find the right brushes that work for you that are the, like the closest equivalent to what you're used to traditionally. So for anyone doing this, uh, doing this stuff, uh, if you have a digital drawing device and you're fairly new, uh, feel free to still use it, but please, please, please try to draw as much as you can uh, traditionally. Uh, try to find larger pieces of paper so you get much more range of motion. Um, in fact, like if you're doing the force exercises, I would recommend getting some 26, 24 by 36 uh, newsprint. Uh, not this. Uh, this is a little expensive, but let's see, newsprint. The best way to get inexpensive newsprint, at least in the U.S., is uh, the, the Blick all-purpose newsprint right here. And just get like a, just like a stack. You can get like a 500 sheet ream for, for like really, really cheap right here. Of like a 24, I think it's 24 by 36, yeah. Uh, and then just get like a hard drawing pad and stuff. Uh, figure drawing horse, figure bench master. Here we go. So uh, I built one of these for myself. This is a, the kind of figure drawing bench that you'll see in life drawing classes and stuff. And you're supposed to have like you're supposed to have a drawing board, and you're supposed to um, hold your you're supposed to usually hold your drawing pencil at the side. Uh, so you want to use and uh, for Mike Matisse. For his uh, his drawing exercises, he has people use it with blunt uh, a blunt instrument, so that you concentrate on the big things instead of the details first. Uh, so that uh, uh, so that you're drawing more with your shoulder and your arm. You're not like you're like get, you're like getting like the big, the big bold statement and stuff. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll also say that uh, it is possible to um, use your shoulder when drawing smaller. But you kind of have to train up doing it, uh, doing it on like a full size pad first, so you can learn how to adapt that. I, I've done a lot of uh, traditional real life figure drawing, so I have kind of like a an understanding for myself of what feels like a close analog to uh, uh, to traditional figure drawing um, in a in a figure drawing in a life drawing class. And like usually the tools that I pick are something that feels a little close to an animation grease pencil or a charcoal stick. Uh, when I'm drawing. So yeah, uh, so yeah. Well, uh, I think that should answer the question pretty well. Does anyone have any additional questions, or do you need me to clarify no something question. that I might have overlooked? Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you draw all from shoulder, even when making like small details? I mean, it, it's okay to occasionally use your wrist, but do not put, avoid putting pressure on it and avoid using overusing it. Like uh, like occasional small movement movements and stuff are okay for like very small t tight detail or something but for the most part like you almost always want to be using your shoulder occasionally your elbow okay. and and very rarely your your wrist uh, you want to avoid your wrist as much as possible especially if you're new because uh you, that's a bad habit to get into and you will give yourself carpal tunnel uh you want to you want to learn to get the you you want to learn to get the control you need uh, using your shoulder. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? Define draftsmanship. Draftsmanship. Yeah, well, or draftsman, whatever that, whatever the term is. Uh, for what? Uh, that literally just means the um, uh, the academic art of drawing. Uh, the ac ac okay. academic practice of drawing. Uh, the... The, uh, that's, it's not it's not anything uh, more than that. I mean, like, there's other definitions of what that term means. Like, it also means like uh, uh, that can also mean like uh, certain types of art architects, architects, and so on, or people who do technical drawings. But uh, for our for our purpose for like for our for our purposes and stuff, when we say draftsmanship, we mean people who. Uh, people who have the the manual trade skill of of drawing of like traditional drawing usually thank you because the only time i've heard about that term was a tony kip how do you say his last name patoa pantoya pantoya video saying that that term is useless so yeah i mean it's kind of a, it's kind of a big term literally just means uh uh draftsmanship when this people say you need to improve your draftsmanship that means uh you have to 
improve your uh, improve your, your drawing quality. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone have any additional questions? Hello. Last round, last round, last round for questions. Uh, I had a question. Yes. So we just need to draw 20 poses and that's it? No, uh, you can do more than this. In fact, let uh, me add that right now. Can go, can go, go above and beyond this. Uh, but don't be sloppy with them. Uh, but don't be sloppy. That means like more, uh, more is not, uh, you want to go for quality over quantity. Like try to get the most you can out of the figures. Uh, if you did a bad job, if you feel like you did a bad, unsatisfying job on them, redo them. Can redo them. And you can redo them. And redo, you can redo them. And what's the other thing I was going to say? Uh, spent, uh, spend around six to eight hours a week doing this stuff. Spend around six to eight hours a week on this. And the reason why I say six to eight hours is because you might need a, you might need a chance to, whoops, sorry. You might need a chance to like redo things. Uh, oh, I'm gonna put aim two because like not everyone can spend like a whole uh, six to eight hours, but that's like a, and you can spend more if you want. Spend around six to eight hours a week on this. So, um, so somebody asked in the Discord, uh, like, how how does like five minutes per figure calculate out of this much? Well, um, that's because you're going to be doing more, a little bit more thinking before you actually put down your pencil to draw, uh, looking at the model and stuff. You might be doing some trial runs of the method, uh, and you might also need to do additional like supplemental study or something uh, to loosen up. This gives you flexibility. This gives you flexibility and time to do a few bullshit runs to like work out the kinks out of your system before you try to do the homework as best you're able to and this gives you a little bit more freedom to um to try to digest the study materials more uh but aim to aim to get around 10 to 20 figure drawings from clear photo reference each week you can of course go beyond that or less than that. it's totally flexible up to you but this is the sweet spot right here to aim for um, I don't want you guys to burn yourselves out by overdoing it, and I don't want you guys to get lazy. Just try to uh, do the best you can. Um, but this is a frame. This is a basic framework to give you something to keep falling back on from week to week. Also, you can do can do draw overs or copy studies. Studies and or so what I mean by that is let me show you so I've uh, I'm trying to ease back into um, like uh, I'm trying to ease back into this method of seeing things this way. Uh, the the way that they Kevin Chen had us drawing in his class and stuff. So this is these are actually like drawover studies I did using the mannequins uh, the mannequin stuff that he gave us in his class um, for the torso and the head and like the legs and the stuff is legs and arms are just like secondary supplemental. Uh, I'm, I'm it's really the head and the torso that I'm that I'm uh, the head and torso mannequinization that I'm concentrating on for these, but. Um, Basically, like how I did it when I first when I first uh, 
started the homework assignment in this class is I was mostly do drawovers and then eventually like I started doing super quick drawovers uh, using the mannequin and then I would use the mannequin that I've done as a guideline to as like a kind of like a cheat sheet to um, do my own freehand uh, do my own like freehand construction reconstruction of the pose um, and uh, try to embellish it a little bit and stuff so it's like a little bit so it has like maybe a little bit uh, more weight in it than the original drawing. Uh, but for, like since I'm redoing this stuff from scratch, uh, I'm I'm starting where I where I where I left off. So these are more drawovers and stuff. I've moved them to the side for like comparison's sake. But like you can see, got some of the other ones that I've done. If I don't know. Uh, yeah, these ones right here. Some more drawovers. So what what when when we get done here, I'm gonna be actually doing some more of these more of these myself for about like an hour or so, and then like for about a half hour, I'm gonna do like a very quick half hour to an hour or so. I'm gonna do like a very quick animation study. Uh, we'll I'll grab like a, something simple, much simpler than the super complicated thing I did last night, which was I tried to do a in one sitting a cowboy an entire cowboy bebop fight scene, and it was really kind of overwhelming. So. This is a this is an Ashida no Joe scene. It's limited animation that I did last that I did two nights ago. This one turned out pretty good because um, there's fewer frames to work with. The poses were very clear. The characters are kind of like the main guy is like shirtless for one thing, so you can see his muscle. Well, no, I don't think he was shirtless, but uh, you could see more of his muscles and stuff. And it was very kind of a simple style and stuff. And it was really fun and uh, and quick to do. But then I tried to do a cowboy peepop fight a really complex cowboy bebop fight scene in like an hour <laughs> this is uh there's you can see some hints of of um you can see some hints of what was in the fight scene in there but there's a lot i missed and a lot i messed up and uh and like this is uh so this is like way more than i would want to take on in a single sitting i could potentially do another study of that fight scene in the future but I, it kind of gave me a better idea of like I would uh, I have a better idea now on how to break this down because this the scene was so complicated I might actually start with some draw over studies and stuff so anyway I just want to share that that's what I'm going to be doing this is my animation is one of my secondary things it eventually I'm going to turn it into my primary thing uh once I figure out a way to kind of like combine um that, or like and combine and infuse like my figure drawing practice with um with uh, an animation in a way that plays out a little bit more consistently for me. Uh, but anyway, so just wanted to share that. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be doing some of these, and I'm also been doing some gesture drawovers. And uh, uh, my goal is to eventually kind of graduate from doing this to doing copy studies. And after that, I'm going to do some animation. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to like. I'm gonna open the floor again for like a last round of questions and then we're gonna and then after that I'm gonna close down OBS and we'll get started on a um, a group study session. We can banter and talk freely during that time and stuff. Feel free to ask more questions too if you'd like. But we'll be we'll doing we'll do that and uh, maybe talk about cool cool ass animation that we've been seeing lately because that might give us an idea of some shots to potentially look at doing a very short study from. So yeah, uh, does anyone have any additional questions? Yeah, I have a question for the for when you're doing a draw over. Um, it looks like you have like a specific process of yeah, like... that's that's from Kevin Chen's class. Uh, like I said, you need you need to use whatever your whatever resource you are you have access to that you are currently studying as whatever you're going to be doing for your draw over or your. Um, or your copy study. It has to be something that you can, that's something uh, that is digestible that you can, that as a next step that you're going to move up from after you've di after you've spent like at least a week or two digesting that. Um, it, okay. Yeah. I, my question more is like, um, is there anything, any any person or something like that that you can like point us to that we can kind of uh take how they approach figure drawing uh and try to apply it for like our practice for uh, draw over studies 
Yeah, this oh, Proko, yeah. Yeah, this dickhead. That's, <laughs> this is who you should be going to. Like, if you can't think of anything else, like, Proko is probably the best resource on uh, YouTube for sure. Let's see here, Proko. But yeah, Proko has uh, playlists of some of their... Let's see here if they got... Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's like, uh, there's like earlier stuff. Because the drawing basics one might help a lot of people, especially because they actually go over like some of the draw the traditional drawing pad stuff. I better not play this on stream because I don't want to get copyright points or whatever. Actually, uh, by YouTube. Hopefully, I, hopefully I don't have to cut that out. But uh, yeah, he's got a, the the uh, figure drawing series right here. Uh, for for people that are newer, or if you need an introduction in materials or or drawing construction, uh, I would strongly recommend checking out his drawing basics. And then, instead of doing figures for a while, uh, do the shape studies and the line studies and stuff that he's talking about there, and really really put a lot of effort into it because you're going to need that in order to, because those are the, going to be the building blocks of being able to do figures. I know. Figures are really important to get into and stuff, and you and they're cool and stuff. But you really, really do trust me. You're going to be giving yourself massive headaches if you don't put in serious effort in like drawing basics. The same thing with uh, draw. If uh, you're new, a good resource to go for. In fact, in fact, in place of the suggestions that I gave, if you're newer or if you want to use this as a secondary thing in addition to your main figure drawing thing. Uh, I would use the lessons on Drawbox, um, starting with their getting started section. Make sure you read everything that they that they have that they say here. Uh, make sure you read everything. You do the homework and that you join their Discord uh, up here, uh, because their Discord actually uh, is full of people that will give you really in depth feedback over um, over what you're doing. So this is a very important thing. I have been putting off actually doing this stuff my doing this site myself uh, i i know a lot of it already but uh there's a lot of exercises on here which are great which are great for traditional draftsmanship improvement and so i'm going to hopefully be step hopefully be able to make some time to step into doing some of these myself in the future um but like it'll improve my perspective because like this thing is uh this this site is really really good on Improving your the core fundamentals of your of your uh, of your ability to like construct objects and and uh, and, uh, and and like understand three dimensional form and of course that will set you up for success when you're getting when you get more into figure drawing anyway so any additional questions before we shut down and we move on to uh, our drawing session. Hey. For the secondary aim, could I look at something like uh, How to Draw by uh, Scott Robertson and Thomas Burling? Could I look at something like that? Or is that like too many things at once? Oh, uh, well, no, you can. That's that's perfectly fine. In fact, like if you want to, if you if you think that you need to focus on the draftsmanship from Scott Robertson in place of figure drawing for a while, I would suggest doing that. And that can be your main thing. Okay. Like I said, like this is the, right here, like this main thing that I've chosen. This is a framework for figure drawing, but you could potentially adapt something like this to um, doing background painting and animate, uh, doing background painting, doing um, prop, uh, prop design or something, or concept mm. sketching. It has to, but there has to be something that you're doing that is a consistent thing you can repeat uh, over uh, and over again yeah, for like a week or two weeks. At a time. Okay. So you have to choose a thing. Should I, should I, should I pick either like Dumatesi and and Glenvilpu or uh, like? It's up just to you. Do... It's up to you. Okay. okay. If you believe that you can juggle like three things at once, go for it. But like, learn, learn, how, no. learn how you learn stuff. I would say that uh, I'm, I'm giving, I'm suggesting, strongly suggesting people pick a main thing that they are concentrating on that they won't sacrifice on and that they'll keep coming back to. And then you have it, and then you have a secondary thing, which you can also treat like a main thing, which could be, have equal importance potentially, but you can also decide to make that secondary thing have less importance so that you, if you want to swap it out for something else, you can. So what you can do is you can use the approach, you can... 
Let's do that real quick. Here, let me. You can use the primary, you can use the main thing. Let's make a little stupid pyramid here. So it's a main thing. What's the main thing that you're going to be concentrating on? I I think the main the thing... Secondary thing. Dairy thing. Extras and experiments for the third thing. Yes. And okay, so like you've got a main thing and it has this step by step weekly progression like this. Like this. Weekly. Progression. The secondary thing also has weekly pro progression. Uh, these extras and experiments, some of them can have weekly progression. But some of them might be one shots that you just try once. Just to try it out. So that you have the freedom to dabble in stuff. Dabble. One shot. So treat it like that. Can sacrifice. Sacrifice. Freedom. So this is your study habit pyramid, basically. Um, the main thing could potentially be your personal work project also, if that is the main thing you're working on right now. Because like, there's going to be times when you are a student or you are behaving as a student. There's going to be times you're behaving more as a student. There's going to be times when you're behaving more as a creator. And uh, depending on how important something is to, to do, like your main thing might be a... Your main thing might wind up being like whatever um, freelance work that you're working on, or or pro or or personal project work you're working on, or like something for a client or whatever. Like, uh, and then your secondary thing is like studying that you do on your own outside of it, or the studying used to be the main thing, or whatever. So I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to get at. Like, it's always got to be a main thing that you're putting all your you're putting most of your energy into. And the, the secondary thing can be something that complements the main thing. The extras and experiments can potentially be like secondary things or pseudo main things. Uh, but you always have a main thing. So always remember that. Uh, try not to overwhelm yourself. Like leave these extras and experiments with enough freedom to sacrifice at a moment and don't beat yourself up if you're not keeping up on them. Same thing with the secondary thing. If you sacrifice it, don't beat yourself up. As long as you're progressing on the main thing to try to master that, you're doing good. Okay. So, how are we doing? Any more questions? When you say spend six to eight hours, do you mean on all the things? And how would you break down the hour? The, the, six, to eight hours? the six to eight hours I actually mean on this, on the main thing. But Main um, thing. Okay, cool. Uh, but, like, it's up to you. Like, however you want to partition your time. Uh, as long as you're getting good, as long as you feel you're getting good, satisfying value out of, like, digesting that thing that you are trying to study and learn and accomplish or create or whatever. Six to eight hours is the rough amount of time that anyone should anyone for any art class should be spending on their homework. Um, assuming that someone is like has a full time job or whatever, like you can spend like around like two hours a night or something on on that. Basically, 
I would consider I would say that you, the best way to do this stuff is to give yourself around two hour two to three hours a day uh, to do it if you can. Uh, but of course, you can invest more time if you have it and you're able to. Um, you can uh, I would say that a good way to study would be to try to spend around three hours. Uh, so uh, the your ult here's here's uh, here's the anatomy of an ultimate study day. Uh, so one hour warm up. Uh, then uh, one hour's warm up. That's like those warm up exercises I showed you in the daily warm up section, basically. Or they can be uh, warm ups for the main thing that you're working on. Then uh, two hours, two to three hours, um, main study thing, five to ten minute breaks every 30 minutes to an hour. So that's like the first half of your day right there. First half of day. I'm talking, this is like, this is your ultimate study. This is like the anatomy of your ultimate study day right here. So first half of day, then uh, literally the same thing, except you might not necessarily do the one hour warm up. You'd be doing like two to three studies of main, main study thing. Again, and again for three times total. Two to three times total. That's your ultimate study day. That's if you uh, really want to commit to a full day of study. Okay, cool. Uh, and the subject that you pick can be different. It can be the same thing, or it can be one of your secondary things. For example, uh, here's an ex here's an example: figure drawing. Drawing. Uh, short pose. short pose, figure drawing, long pose, then character, study, Character study. Uh, that means like studying existing characters, or trying, or like trying to utilize some of the stuff you did in figure drawing to adapt to, to character design or something. Or, uh, or I don't know. Like, uh, let's let's keep it in, in the ballpark of so like head drawing. Or it could be, uh, or, or all, th or like all three things could be like short pose figure drawing for the day. So what, however you want to set it up. But remember, like, as long as you're getting the main thing that you, um, uh, the main thing that you've chosen that you're focused on, uh, that you are going to be continually studying and trying to master uh, from week to week uh, in one of these blocks for your, for whatever your, you know, for your ultimate study day, then you're good to go. So, yeah, like... That's your ultimate study day. So let's take a look at a minimal study day. Study day. 15 minutes on anything. you want to sketch. So that's uh, that's the 15 minute rule. 
If you can't make time to draw, or if you are feeling a little bit tired and burned out, use the 15 minute rule. Uh, every day, even if you're feeling poopy, commit yourself to drawing at least for 15 minutes. Reason for that is it becomes a way to triage the situation. You're you're going to be losing some of your ability to, uh, to uh, to like, uh, to draw when you're not drawing as much. That's just that's just normal. But if you spend 15 minutes a day drawing, uh, that triages the situation. It also keeps your visual memory active, and also you often trick yourself into sitting down for longer than 15 minutes and pretty soon that 15 minute session you weren't feeling so great turns into an hour session and then a two hour session and then a three hour session and uh so that's why you want to use the 15 minute rule. uh it's it's a way to triage your situation when you can't find time to draw or if you are too tired or if you think you're too tired to draw just try it just try sitting down you often like feel better and feel and realize that you have more time than you realized to put in you can even like I would even carry a sketchbook around uh, if you're like uh, if you like can get a few minutes in on your lunch break or something if you're full time if you've got a full time job or something. So that's the absolute that's the absolute minimal study day. Uh, what is the minimal study day though? Minimal study day. Study day. Minimal study day is like this. One to two hours, warm up, and main thing. Warm up and, and main thing study, basically. This and that's like your middle study day, and then like your average study day. And this, your minimal study day, you can even use on days when you aren't feeling as hot about, or like. I want to play more video games today. Like, I've done a lot of good work throughout the week. I'm just going to do a minimal study day today. I'll get a few hours in of effective practice, and I'll, just, I'll do a harder study day tomorrow. Something like that. So you can use that then. And then here's the average study day. So average study day should be around one hour warm-up. And then two to three, let's make it two to four hours. Cause that might be uh, two to four hours on main thing. Thing and one to two hours secondary or free free sketch by free sketch i mean draw whatever you want like you can experiment draw stuff for fun draw characters do whatever you like uh try some new techniques that you haven't tried yet whatever So yeah, uh, and also like, always be conscious of what you need, what you need to make it into being your main thing. Uh, be con like, be conscious of that you're not burning yourself out. Sometimes you might be grinding a little bit too hard on the main thing. You need to swap it out with something else. But uh, try to find a track of progression that's going to work well for you. If you're taking uh, this is something, this is something that you, this framework that I'm giving you guys is something that you can use. Uh, to revolve and fall back on when you're not enrolled in classes and uh, and when you might be like full-time job you might have a full-time job or whatever it's a framework that you that you can use autonomously um, and it's modular and stuff it gives you a baseline of progression and study so anyway uh, final 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 uh, question I'm gonna I'm gonna take like one or two more questions if there's any more and then we will we will end this because uh, we really should get like at least an hour of drawing in and uh, 
a little bit of animation, like really small. <laughs> Let's make it small, super small tonight. So go ahead. Any 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 more questions? We good? You guys all satisfied? All right. So if you guys are all satisfied, uh, if you're able to speak, say uh, say goodbye to everyone on YouTube. Hey, you, sis. Bye, YouTube. Bye. See you guys later. Yeah, bye, everyone. Bye, bye. All right, let's get started.